Hey everyone, welcome to uh, the next reading in Humble, Humble Reading number three. Uh, I'm Brian, the host of this little show, and we're going to learn a little bit about what it means to be a knucklehead student writer in a little bit more detail. Reel the intro. Let's get started. Let's do this. <gasps> wow, that, that opening had way too much energy for me. Uh, I don't know where that came from. So here's what we got going on today. Um, if you're in Old Humble, if you're in Old Humble, which is which is this book, uh, you're on pages 29 to 36. If you're in New Humble, you're on pages 19 to 24. So as I'm looking at, oh, I'm like not even on those pages. Uh, as I'm looking at the reading right now, it starts off. Uh, it says the college essay is a process, and then it starts with I think the greatest opening of a chapter where it says. Uh, start thinking for yourself. Such a big deal. Uh, I don't even know what to say about that, but it has a lot to do with how we write and about the processes that we've engaged in that really kind of move away from that. And, and let me show you what I mean. So as Humble gets into this on page 30, if you're an old Humble, there are three writing processes which are listed here that all kind of move away from an act, a person actually thinking for themselves. And what Humboldt calls on page 31, an abdication of the writer's responsibility to think for themselves. So the first one has to do with a, a person sitting down in a room with a candle, you know, getting with their computer, and then just trying to let ideas come to them in some weird clairvoyant process. The second one has to do with kind of going to the library, and, and, and I guess now we would think about just not having to go to the library, of course but just kind of looking around on the internet and seeing what you know you find and then you just repeat those things. Now, Humble calls that uh, composting, I believe. And then the third one has to do with uh, sitting down where the writer starts whenever I have a paper assignment. Uh, my mother and I like to sit down and talk through things. And that's kind of how it should be either. You're basically giving that process to somebody else instead of taking ownership of it. Now, um, I'm on the next page where Humble talks about how we cling to our processes because sometimes we take anything that works for us and we just go with it no matter what. Even if it might seem illogical or ineffective to other people, we just, oh, we hold on to it. Um, and sometimes that has to do with our relative successes as writers, um, especially if we've had teachers in the past, as Humble says here, at some dark moment in your past, some teacher might have told you that you were a bad writer. So you feel like anything that works, I'm going to go with it no matter what, and I'm never changing it. As if bad writing were a rash and you had it and it wasn't going to get better. If you took that teacher's diagnosis seriously, you might now even cling harder to any ritual that works for you, as I mentioned. But here's the real story about that incident. Uh, the teacher was just being a bad teacher, and I agree. You may not have had the actual skills that you needed at that particular moment to be an effective writer at that moment in time, but your teacher was blaming you for their failure. What a rotten teacher, Humble says, and he's not wrong. So sometimes our processes, they might, they might be due for an overhaul depending upon what our experiences have been in previous classes in English uh, as we've come up through our systems. So when you actually get to the idea about don't be a knucklehead, and that's what our journal is about this time, I'm going to ask you to define what that means based on the reading here. Uh, and there are, there's a set of lists there that'll help you answer that question. But I also want to talk about this idea of being a knucklehead in really general terms. Uh, and I got a list on a script here, which you guys can't see. Oh wait, there you can see. I just flipped it. Uh, I've got a list here, so I'm going to look at the list here real quick, and, and that'll be the end of this video. This is uh, being a knucklehead in real life and see if you agree or disagree. So here's the first thing. Uh, going on a run in a thunderstorm outside. Maybe, maybe. Uh, how about this one? Um, talking politics at a family party or on Twitter. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that might be knuckleheads. That might be knucklehead behavior. And finally, finally, here's one. Um, uh, I'm looking down the list again. Uh, liking pictures online that are five years old that belong to an ex or an old boyfriend or girlfriend way back in the day. 
that uh, that might also be knucklehead behavior. Oh, oh, and another one. Um, older people using TikTok. I don't know what they're thinking, but that's probably knucklehead behavior. So what I'm gonna be asking you do, to do in the journal then is to find that equivalent for academic behavior. So that's all I have today in this humble big idea video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. That's because the that's that's because the baseball season just started again. Go Nationals. And Barcelona. <laughs>